All right, so this is for you new dog owners out there. We're looking at the training collar today. So this is to train your dog to be more obedient and less uh, loud and less um, aggressive in terms of barking. So out of the box, it's pretty simple. You have the USB for the charger, a uh, simple USB charger, one of the universal um, USB docks here which you can find, which is plugged easily into the bottom here. And then let's have a look at actually how this device works. So you've got a few different functions here. You've got the two nodes here, which will issue a small electric charge to your dog. Now it's not going to be too painful. It's just going to be enough of a jolt that it will train your dog to understand the response when it's barking is not a good thing so it will learn that by barking it's going to receive this electric pulse and it's just going to be uncomfortable enough that they stop doing that so there are a few functions there's vibration and there's shock so this one here the first button is vibration the second button is shock and the third button is the sensitivity so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and then we're going to have a look at how it's going to work. So the first button we have here is for the vibration. So you can see it's going up from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this is going to be how much the collar vibrates when the dog barks. The second one is the shock. So it also goes up to seven, seven being the most powerful. And then S, this is the sensitivity. So in terms of one, we can see that nothing happens. And then when we put this all the way up to seven, five, six, seven, it vibrates and then you get the electric pulse there. So this setting, you don't want to start with your dog. Just at the beginning, you want to start with one and one. And then when you see the response of your dog, then you can see whether you need to increase this to get the same effect. Now, when you put this on your dog, you don't want it to be too tight or too loose. So usually if you can get two fingers in, then it should be enough for the dog. So you don't want it too tight or too loose. You want it just so you can get about two fingers in between the dog and the device. So in terms of using this during different weather, if you want to take your dog out while it's raining outside, it's completely fine. So it's rainproof, but the one thing it's not, it's not uh, suitable for swimming. So if you want dog wants to go swimming in a river, a sea or a pool, then we recommend to take it off. And we also don't recommend to keep the dog wearing it all day only when it's in situations where you really need to train the dog. So this is going to be a really useful tool for young dog owners to really get that puppy obeying its owner and meaning you can have more fun time with it. Okay, so it comes with a little user guide which is going to be very useful. So you want to apply this to the dog's throat, so just below the throat. And one of the interesting things is it doesn't actually respond to other dog sounds. So if your dog is barking, woof, 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 it's going to react to the vibrations from the dog's throat. So if another dog comes along, woof, woof, they're not going to be able to zap the collar. So even if they're barking, it's not going to activate the collar. It needs to be from the dog that's wearing it. So in terms of what kind of power is suitable for your dog, it comes with a guide. So. For a mini dog, maybe a little uh, Dutchhund or a Poodle or a Pomeranian, you can use zero to one. So you might not need any shock at all, just the vibration. If you have a small dog, which can be a Bulldog, a Shih Tzu, a Havanese, Cocker Spaniel, King Charles Terrier, then you might want to use one to two on the vibration and zero to one on the shock. So you, for a small dog, you can maybe use level one on the shock. 
For a medium sized dog, medium sized dogs might be Beagles, uh, German short haired pointers, Siberian Huskies, Australian Shepherds, English Springer Spaniels. Uh, you can go one to two on the vibration and one to two on the shock. All the way up to large dogs, such as uh, Labrador, Golden Retriever, Boxer. You can go three to four on both the shock and the vibration. And huge dogs, so we're talking Rottweilers, Dobermans, Great Dane and Mastiffs. You can go up to five to seven for both the vibration and the shock. So this is a good guide to see what kind of levels of vibration and shock you need to use depending on what sort of dog you have. So make sure you read this carefully before you use it.